Good morning, Wesley Church. What a day it is in the house of the Lord. Well, we have lots going on. Um, and uh, earlier we had a baptism. Uh, we baptized Rebecca Elaine Richmond. They are new, uh, new her parents are new members, uh, Michael and Hannah Richmond. So we had a, a great time with that. Let me uh, just give you a few rundowns. First of all, if you received a commitment card in the mail, it probably had the wrong year on it. Probably had 2023. We don't know, we don't want to know what you're going to commit for 2023. We want to know what you're going to commit for 2024. So just in case there's any um, complications on that, and that was my fault. And by my fault, I mean really not my fault at all. Uh, so anyways, uh, but we have a, a lot going on. We have uh, worship tonight at 6, dinner at 5. It's going to be uh, turkey dinner, and uh, which is great. We need several of those this month to make up for the rest of the year when for some reason we don't eat turkey and stuffing only once a year, which it's, a, it's just such a delight to eat. Um, anyways, we're going to break bread together and then worship uh, led by yours truly. Well, uh, communion and um, the message. Uh, Mother's Day Out has a happy Thanksgiving program uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. That's November 13th and 14th at 11 a.m. Women of Wesley, they're at it again, the Natchez Riverboat trip with Captain Nick Huckabee this week. Yeah. And Nick, uh, if you don't know, is blind, so that'll be interesting. No, I'm just kidding. No, Nick is not blind. Uh, live, live Nativity meeting Wednesday, November 15th, 7 p.m. Journey class. We still need characters to sign up. Also, uh, I didn't have this in the early service, but I have it now. It's called Light a Light, $5 per listing in honor, memor in honor or memory uh, of someone. And the proceeds benefit the Women of Wesley, the Wowsers Mission Projects, and the Youth Camp Fund. Forms are available outside that door. And we're almost done with the announcements, except I want to invite uh, the incomparable Treva up here uh, to give us a lowdown. Right, is my mic on? Early this morning, I got halfway through and it wasn't, so I had to repeat myself. All right, first of all, I want to say thank you. This giving tree that we do has been amazing. 150 tags. That's all we have left out there. Now, you just need to bring it back. <laughs> Which you have a little bit of time. I know a lot of people are probably saving, you know, for their Black Friday specials and all that kind of stuff. Um, Mr. Cliff has been, you know, fabulous in getting stuff already over there and everything. I, these kids are going to be blessed. 150 tags. I mean, we've blown it out of the water. So thank y'all so much. So how many of y'all noticed the stuff that's going on up front with the live nativity? It'll be here before we know it. I know. So exciting. So mark your calendars. Get out your calendars, your phone on December 3rd. It's a Sunday. I told the other people, you're going to go to church, you're going to go to Sunday school, and then you're going to come help. You guys go to Sunday school, come to church, and then you're going to help. Come to church wearing your play clothes. You're going to get dirty. You're going to get maybe bit by mosquitoes, but it's all worth it. But you don't have to leave to go have lunch because the youth group is doing a spaghetti lunch. All you have to do is go right on over there, get your meal, $10 to get you spaghetti, meatballs, a salad, a roll, and a dessert. You don't even have to leave. You can come in your play clothes. So I have some tickets here. Nick Austin will have some tickets. Um, almost all of the youth have tickets. The front office will have tickets. Only $10, and you get four meatballs. That's a lot because we like the meat. So December 3rd, help us finish doing all the live nativity stuff, and thank you guys always for your support. Take it away, Pastor. Thank you. Well, uh, let us stand for our call to, call to worship.
Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this ability to gather together in your house. As we sit here, Lord, we have many things to be thankful for, many things to rejoice over, and we just give glory to you and thanks and praise for all those things. Of course, Lord, as humans living in 2023, we have lots of things on our minds. Things that in the past, things that we have to do today and tomorrow, concerns and worries about people that we care about, Lord. And you know who these people are. And as the great physician and, and gentle healer, we just lift them up to you. You know who are on our hearts and minds today. Maybe it's ourself. So we lift up all of those people to you. Lord, in this world, it's the world pulls at us. And when the world pulls at us, we have a choice. We can start to walk down towards the world and get caught up with the lust of the world and Can continue to be steadfast in the word and in you wherever we are today lord please help us please help us to turn around if we need to turn around or if we are on the right path help us to take those firm fierce steps right back to jesus christ and lord we lift up the people in the middle east the people in Israel and Gaza, all of those who are losing their lives. We pray for peace. We pray that there would be a ceasefire and somehow, some way, there would be a way for Israel to be a state where there isn't so many other nations trying to bring them down. And we pray, Lord, for all the Jewish folks in, in our country and across the world who have been targets of anti-Semitic rhetoric and even physical harm. We ask that that stop. Your word clearly says, I will bless those who bless, bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And although, Lord, it makes us sick to see anybody, anybody, any innocent civilian perish. We do lift up Israel to you. We thank you, Lord, that you use our prayers for others, for Israel, for ourselves, as we come to you. And we launch these prayers to a place where we can't go the throne room of heaven. And of course, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who allows us to live and helps us to live, I should say, a life different from those not in Christ. And it was Christ who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever.
Will the ushers please come forward. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have given to us. So we have an opportunity to give back what is rightly yours. And on top of that, our offerings. So receive these gifts, Lord, as a token of our growing love for you as we seek to expand the kingdom and reach out to this mission field we call Nederland in Mid-County. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. If I could have Pastor Drew join me up front, please, and any children and tweens hiding. All right.
right, so um, over the last few weeks, the children um, challenged the adults in a food drive contest, and we collected uh, around 500 things to donate. So that's really awesome. Um, it'll help a lot of people who really need it. The kids were very excited because they won. So Pastor Drew is going to do us a favor, and he is going to bless this food for us. I guess us old folks better get busy. <laughs> Today's scripture reading is from Romans 12, 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect with the will of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Man, thank you, Patty. <clears throat> Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to exhort your word. But I need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit here, Lord. So I call upon the Holy Spirit to anoint my words as they go forth from the meditations of my heart to, the, to your hearers. We trust you in this process and pray all this in Jesus' most holy name. Well, if you have spent time in the Old Testament, you are familiar with animal sacrifices. Animal sacrifices that took place to atone for the sins of the people. And talking about animal sacrifices in 2023 is kind of weird uh, to some, but they did this to atone for sin. Now, why did they do this to atone for sin? Well, God was very clear with Moses. The life of a creature, the life of a creature is in the blood. And this is the currency that I'm going to use to pay for your sins, is basically what God, I'm paraphrasing and all that, but that's basically what God told Moses. And so it was through the blood of these animals. And then God gave us the ultimate sacrificial lamb in Jesus Christ who shed his blood. And now we don't have to go about slaughtering lambs because the ultimate sacrificial lamb spilled his blood for us in the most generous offer and the most generous gift that mankind has ever received. And so saying yes with our head and our hearts to Jesus' offer of salvation allows you and me to be what may seem like an oxymoron. Now, I've been called part of that before, the oxymoron part. I've been, be call, I've been called the M, I've been called a moron before. <laughs> but, of course, those people were, were wrong. Anyways, <laughs> no comments, please. No comments, please. No amens. Um, but we are to be a living sacrifice. That is kind of an oxymoron. But Paul in his letter to the church at Rome is imploring them to present themselves as living, breathing sacrifices 
to God. He writes, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Well, that's great, isn't it? Let's just all be living sacrifices. But how do we actually do that? He says in the very next verse, do not conform to the pattern of this, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now that means that we see things differently now. Before Christ and after Christ, we see things differently. When we come to faith in Christ, we see things that maybe we were doing or not doing that we shouldn't do or should do. And so we have this renewing of mind where we see ourselves as sinners in need of a Savior. And so he says, renew your, by transformed by the renewing of your mind, he says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So he says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. That's the recipe. Well, that's pretty hard, right? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Well, I think we get the answer in how to do this in 1 John, or uh, yeah, 1 John 2, 15 through 16. John says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. And when he's talking about the world, he's talking about this. He says, for everything in the world, one, lust of the flesh, two, lust of the eyes, three, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. So when we're talking about worldliness, when we're talking about the, wor the world, we are talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, those three things. And so we've got to conquer those three things in order to be living sacrifices for Jesus Christ. And the first one is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. This is everything we see, think, imagine that involves excess of physical desires. Food and drink, physical intimacy, and anything that fulfills a, a desire. And the issue with that is, is that we can replace the joy and peace that we get from God with things of the world that will only at best be fleeting in its happiness or joy or fulfillment. It will only, only be fleeting, very, very fleeting. But this is how many people live their lives. Eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow we die. And so what do they do? They keep pouring in things and doing things to, to almost numb themselves because, well, they are overtaken with the lust of the flesh. And this kind of goes hand in hand with lust of the eyes. The second one, lust of the eyes. This involves seeing things that we want that turns to the envy of others. Now, there are things that I want, but I don't think I'm that envious. I would love to have Tiger Woods' golf swing. I don't have it. I'm not envious of him because I, I know that God, if he wanted me to have it, he would have given it to me. He would have given me the talent to get there. But he didn't want me, he didn't, that's not what his plan was. You see, when we see things like that, then we, then we don't, it's harder to get envious, right? When we, we figure God has us where we want us, and God has given us the gifts and graces that he has given us out of his sovereignty, out of his will, out of his wisdom, then there's no real reason to be envious. But eyes, eyes, the lust of the eyes can, can definitely trip us up because it can lead to envy. And envy is, is not good. Envy will not allow us to be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. 
So we've got the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the final one, pride of life. Now, many of you are proud of your kids and grandkids. That's, that's fine. Pride is not a bad word in a lot of areas. I mean, I'm proud of what our kids do. I'm proud of a lot of things that our church do, church does, right? I'm proud. But this type of pride is when we puff ourselves up to the degree where we say, Jesus, you get off the throne of my life. I sit on the throne of my life. I don't need you on the throne. I don't need you at the wheel or the captain's wheel. I will take the wheel. That is pride. And that is that is what we would call very, very, very bad pride. But we've got billions of people living like this. They're their own gods. They're their own gods. Um, we have them everywhere. Um, most of the world are their own gods. And that doesn't end up well. And one of John Wesley's 22 daily questions. John Wesley had 22 questions that he asked himself and his brothers in the Holy Club asked themselves and one of them was this. Am I proud? And he wasn't saying, are you proud of your kids? Are you proud of the... You know, that, that's a certain type of, of pride that I think is healthy. Now, that could get out of hand, too, you know, if you, make your, if you make your kids an idol or whatever like that, which no one in this country does, for sure. Um, <laughs> but, but that's good pride for the most part. Am I proud? What he's saying there is, am I too proud to let God lead? Because I know. But that's silly. The created knows more than the creator. That's not how it works. Now, when we look at these things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, these are three areas that can take our ability away from being living sacrifices for Jesus Christ. And if I tell you, well, live, being a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ, that may not sound fun. And I'm going to tell you, it's not easy. But it's your best life. I see it on TV. I hear it on the radio. I see it on social media. So-and-so is living their best life. Well, you're living your best life when you're a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. That's your best life. It's not the easiest life, but your best life is not knocking things off your bucket list. I've said this at just about every church I've been at, and there's nothing wrong with having a bucket list, but, you know, at, at some point we have to come and realize that our best life is serving Jesus Christ. I think of the people in here at 9 o'clock and you, you folks in here, I would much rather spend my time with you than anybody else. And, and some people would say, well, church people and pastors are lame and it's no fun. Well, there's fun in it, but it, it, whatever you want to call it, it's the best life. It's your best life. Because the alternative is death, eventual death. And you say, well, we're all going to die. No, 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 no. We go from life to life. We turn in these bodies and we go life to life. But some people go life to death. And that's why it's so important to tell people about your faith, to invite people to church, and to invite people into relationship with Jesus Christ. So even though living sacri being a living sacrifice doesn't sound like much fun, and at times it isn't, and at times it's hard, it's the best life. And so I want to leave you with this question today. 
what change do you have to make? Or changes do you have to make, do I have to make, to be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ? Because you see, when we're a living sacrifice, our lives should look the same when we're in church, when we're by ourselves, when we're at the workplace, when we're confronted by somebody that's angry, or when we're on the mountaintop, or when we're in the corner of our room crying. We should always be consistent that we are living sacrifices. So what changes do we have to make to get there? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you provide us with an opportunity to be a living sacrifice, and you want to meet each and every one of us where we're at. No matter where we are on the journey with you, Lord, whether we're we're, we're down the road with sanctification or just getting started. Meet us there, Lord. And grab our hand and or let us hold on to your hand as, as I think your hand is always outstretched for us. But let us take hold of that hand, Lord, and go hand in hand forward so that we can be that living sacrifice for Christ. We thank you and we pray all this in the name above all names, the King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you stand with me as we affirm our faith this morning? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. Judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Well, thank you all for being here today. I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, at least God's, I thought God was not happy with what I preached. Maybe, maybe that was it. Um, my favorite hour is to spend with you at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, so thank you for being here. Let us, um, let, us receive, let, let us receive this prayer as we go forth. Lord, bless our steps as we strive to be a living sacrifice for you. We thank you so much, Lord, for that opportunity to live our best lives, even though it's, a, it's not always easy, but it's still the best and most rewarding, and we thank you, Lord for calling us to this life. We pray this in Jesus' almighty name, amen. amen.